Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, seizure cluster poll that was uh, just uh, revealed at the annual epilepsy uh, meeting here. Uh, it was an online uh, poll conducted uh, in September of 2014. It was uh, sponsored by Upshur Smith but conducted through the Epilepsy Foundation of America. And the goal was to look at uh, families. Uh, so caregivers, uh, physicians, and epilepsy specialists and how they thought about uh, seizure clusters or seizure emergencies and um, how patients got talked to by doctors and how doctors talked to patients about the treatment, what to do uh, during those. So to try and understand it better so we could figure out what we need to do to, uh, as we approach treatment options for them. couple things were fascinating is that there was a disconnect between the patients and their doctors. Uh, the patients uh, were concerned that the seizure clusters really limited their kind of lifestyle. Uh, they had kind of financial impact, social impact, emotional impact. The doctors all agreed it had that impact but they kind of tended to discount it a little bit more. They didn't, they didn't emphasize it as much or weight it as heavily uh, as the caregivers and the families did. So there's a little bit of disconnect there. The other disconnect was that the doctors thought that they had plans for the patients of what to do if they had a seizure emergency at home and that um, that was well worked out. When we talked to the patients, they really didn't really feel they did have a good plan and actually the most common thing they thought they were supposed to do was just stay calm. They reflect a pretty big treatment gap. A, gap. a lot of it may be due to just ways of communication and differences, uh, uh, what wording means from one side of the fence to the other, if you will. So one of the key things it taught us was, you know, even if we had a great treatment tomorrow, we got to fix some of this conversation and language so that the doctors and patients, you know, are at the same level and uh, they're both leaving, uh, you know, thinking they talked about the same thing and addressing the same issues. So key is just understanding that, hey, just because you think you told your patient this, this is what they're hearing. So one is get this information so we can go back to the docs and say, these are terms that maybe resonate better with families so they understand what you're talking about, non-medical, you know, terms that ones they understand. Uh, and then also going to the families and saying, when you have this problem, you know, this is what you need to be asking the doctor for. This is, you know, the way to word it so that they're linking up with you. Uh, and then as we have effective therapies that come forward to make sure that they're using that same language, because as you know, a lot of our medicines have very complicated labels and they don't translate well at all to everyday language. So I think there's a couple. So one is the fact that, you know, if you have seizures that repeat that occur close to each other at home, it's just have common language of what do we call that and that that's important to recognize that's outside of a normal seizure and it, it needs urgent attention. So we've got to develop kind of understanding around that from the patients and wording that everyone agrees with uh, on that and then just getting the message out that, that there are good at-home treatment options that can really help the patients with that so they can lead as normal a life as possible without this fear of if this happens, you know, you know we may not want to be at the movies or we may not want to be on vacation at grandma's. So it is different. Patients that have seizure clusters, we know, are more likely for those to become uh, occasionally very serious and potentially even life-threatening. So it is a different entity. And the next couple of steps are, well, one is to get the information out, get it published, so that's uh, eminently happening. Uh, and then two is to start to work with patient groups, which is why we work with the Epilepsy Foundation of America to get it out through them to kind of the lay group to the patients and saying, okay, this is how you need to talk to your doctors. And the second one is educational campaign, getting to the doctors too. So it'll be published, be it presented at meetings like this so we can get the word out because we've got to link these two up. We've got to get them talking on the same page.